So today I want to talk about uh, foundations, uh, and not charitable foundations like in the U.S., but the civil law entity foundation. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the differences between trusts and foundations and, um, you know, which one's better. Let's start with this. The biggest difference between a trust and a foundation uh, is, well, before I get into the actual differences, let me say this. Trusts evolved out of, out of common law. They're a common law concept. Whereas uh, foundations are, are, are a civil law entity that's, that's you know, allowable specifically un under some statute in, in the jurisdiction that, that allows for foundation. But I think the biggest difference between the two um, is that a foundation is essentially a contract between the uh, settler, which is the person who puts the assets in trust, and the trustee, the person who's going to administer the trust on behalf of the beneficiaries. It's not itself a legal entity, although a lot of people think it is. It's, it's a contract. Um, and the foundation is an actual entity. It's, 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 it's like a corporation sort of without shares. Um, and so, for example, with a trust, because it's not an entity, it can't have assets titled in its own name. It has to have assets titled in the name of the trustee of the trust. Whereas with a foundation, uh, assets can be titled directly in, in the name of the foundation. And I'm often asked, you know, what's better, a, a trust or a foundation? Um, and I always give the answer that clients hate most. Well, it depends on a lot of different factors. Um, I think the generic answer is if you're in a common law jurisdiction, a trust is probably going to be better for you because um, the courts and, and, and people that the trust has to do business with or interact with are going to know how to deal with it with a trust. Uh, if you're in a civil law jurisdiction, you probably want to deal with the foundation uh, for those same reasons. And also, uh, because trusts are, trusts are often uh, disregarded uh, in civil law jurisdictions. If my preference between the two, I, I, I personally feel like foundations are, are, are a superior entity um, over, over trusts, but they do cause some potential issues. You try to have a foundation that interacts with common law jurisdiction because those common law jurisdictions will often view the foundation as a corporation, um, which can have some, some pretty negative tax consequences. So, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm gonna give a broad overview of, of trust versus foundations and how you can use them, them similarly. You know, trusts typically have, uh, you know, the parties to a trust are you have the settler, that's the person who's gonna form the trust, puts the assets in. You have the trustee, he's the, per the, the, the trustee is the person who's gonna hold those assets and administer them for the benefit of the beneficiaries, which are the people that are you know, entitled to the assets. Um, and then in some instances, you have a protector um, who, uh, whose job is, is basically to kind of oversee the trustee, make sure they're doing the job, and if not, to remove the trustee and, and, and replace him. You can vary the powers widely of the protector, but, but that's a very tip, fairly typical situation. Now, with foundations, you often have very similar um, uh, type parties involved. So you have the founder who founds the foundations and transfers assets to it, very much like the settler in a trust. You have the foundation council. Um, the, the, kind of, the names change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction with foundations, but you generally have like a foundation council. They're kind of like the trustees. They manage the whole thing. But again, the difference is the assets are held in the name of the foundation, not in the name of the council. Um, like you would like you would hold assets in the name of the trustee. Uh, then you can also have beneficiaries of the foundation, which you know the people who have been entitled to to get the benefit of, of, of what the foundation has. And a lot of times you have a guardian, which is very much like a protector, has the power to oversee the council. Again, what I really like about foundations and the assets are, are, are titled in, in the name of uh, the foundation, and generally the foundation council does not owe any fiduciary duties to the beneficiary of the foundation. They owe them to the foundation, but not the beneficiaries, whereas a trustee owns fiduciary duties um, to, to the beneficiaries. 
which you know has its own advantages, right? It kind of it maybe holds the trustee to to a higher standard, but it also gives the trustee a, a lot of liability. You know, foundations because you don't have that generally don't have that fiduciary duty aspect. Uh, foundations are often good for for holding like you know riskier assets. Um, I think the other big advantage to to foundations is because you actually have an incorporated entity. Um, and that can hold title to assets in its own name, um, that it get that it's much easier dealing with banks and, and, and negotiating contracts and, and, and stuff like that, um, because the entity is doing so on, on its own behalf. Um, so when I can use foundations, I prefer to use them. Um, I think that uh, you know mo even a lot of common law jurisdictions have now uh, instituted. Um, a foundation law. As a matter of fact, we have a, a couple foundation laws here in the UAE where I live uh, now. The newest of which is the the, the Rack ICC Foundation, which is is a very modern uh, um, foundation law. You know, they kind of took the best from all the other foundation laws around the world and 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 created theirs. And I think it's 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 really really good. Um, you know, it doesn't recognize, for example, forced airship rules of other countries. Um, it doesn't recognize foreign judgments. Um, so, you know, there's no public beneficial owner register. So there's really a lot of, a lot of advantages to it. Foundations can get tricky in the context of uh, dealing with common law countries because a, common, a lot of common law countries will view the foundation as a corporation and uh, tax it as such, which isn't always so advantageous. A lot of times it would be better to be taxed as a trust. Some countries, for example, like Malta, let you choose whether you want the foundation to be taxed as a, as a trust or a um, corporation. I think that's a, a really good way of, uh, of administering tax rules as it pertains to foundations. Um, one of, I think, one of the, the rule, worst tax regimes that has to do with foundations is probably the U.S.'s. So the U.S.'s tax regime says, well, if, you know, um, if, if uh, the foundation uh, looks more like a trust, it should be taxed as a trust. If it looks more like a corporate foreign corporation, it should be taxed like a foreign corporation. Uh, for those of you who have any knowledge of U.S. international taxation, uh, that is a big difference in the way uh, something's taxed, you know, between a, a trust and, and a corporation. Uh, and, and the hard part is they don't really give you any, you know, hard and fast guidance on this. Um, you know, there's not like a, like a box you can check to say, I want to be a, a trust, I want to be a corporation. Um, it's kind of up to the tax professional to, to, to decide which way it should be taxed. And then you hope the IRS accepts it. Um, if they don't, you know, and you think you're, you're found, you know, if you think your foundation is being taxed as a trust and all of a sudden the IRS comes in and says, no, well, it's, it's a foundation and you lose, or, or sorry, a corporation, you lose that argument, it's going to have some pretty gnarly tax consequences for you. Um, and one of the things that I see that, you know, is really offensive to me, you see a lot of Americans go out, um, and I think because foundations are sort of um, becoming more and more popular, right? It used to be something that in most common law jurisdictions, like a lot of the islands, didn't exist, right? Now, even though, now a lot of common law jurisdictions have implemented a foundation law. And so it's kind of the newest, latest, greatest thing. It's very flexible. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it has, you know, great asset protection law behind it and, and all this stuff. Uh, and you see a lot of service providers out there pushing foundations which I don't necessarily disagree with. I think foundations are, 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 are great entities. Obviously, you know, some countries have better laws than others. Foundations are becoming more and more popular and they're being pushed on Americans more and more when trying to set up estate planning outside the US. But a lot of the people that are kind of pushing these foundations, uh, either they don't know or don't care what the potential US tax consequences are. And so, you know, a lot of times you see people, they go out, they set up a foreign foundation and then they come to get <coughs> their, um, you know, their taxes prepared. And, you know, you read these foundation deeds or charters or whatever it's called from, from the jurisdiction. And you're like, man, this probably, this could wind up not being so beneficial for you. Right. Um, 
And so I think what's really important, I'm not saying that Americans shouldn't use foundations, but what I'm saying is if you're American and you want to use a foundation, you need to um, do a lot more planning. Uh, you want to make sure that your foundation is drafted in such a way that it's very clear that, it's, that, that it is intended to be treated as a trust and, and that everything that's, that, that's drafted in its governing documents um, operates like a trust, right? It's going to save you a lot of heartache. And one of the issues is it's, it often becomes very difficult to change it after the fact because in order to get the most asset protection value, you usually would make the, the, the foundation irrevocable. And a lot of times when it's irrevocable, it means you can't amend it either. So a lot of times some people form foundations and they're kind of stuck with it. And you got to hope for the best uh, and you can't change it because it's irrevocable and unamendable. So it's very important that, you know, if you're going to set up, if you're an American, you're going to set up a foundation. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say don't do it, but I wouldn't just go take the boilerplate foundation deed, you know, and hire an American tax professional. American trust professional that really know what they're doing and um, draft it properly uh, to help ensure that it's going to be taxed as a trust. There's no guarantee it will be taxed as a trust, but I think you can really increase your, your, your likelihood that if it were, you know, challenged or looked at by the IRS that, you know, it'd be pretty clear that it would be a trust. Um, that's why it's dangerous to use entity salesmen rather than, than real advisors. But anyway, just something I thought I'd talk about today. I hope you found this useful. Peace.